In our last lesson, we set up our environment. And in this lesson, we're going to create our very first extension. It's going to be a Hello World example extension. So let's get started. So you can see I've opened the ClickSense hub. And I'm going to navigate to the top right to the Dev Hub. You can see that link here on the screen. And that will launch in a new browser. So let me just bring that up and maximize. And this is the Dev Hub. So for, for those of you who haven't navigated to the Dev Hub before, this is where we can interact and manage the Click APIs. So you can see on the left hand side, there's a number of tools for interacting with the APIs. We've got the single configurator, extensions, mashups, widgets, all that good stuff. So we're going to focus on the visualization extensions and we're going to create a new extension. Let's call our extension Hello World and we can select a predefined template. So we're going to select the basic visualization template and then create and edit. Okay, so this has generated two files, a .qext file and a .js file. I'm just going to actually navigate to C drive um, just to show you that extension actually where it's created. So if you go into users and then your username documents, then click sense extensions, you'll see there is a new folder there uh, called Hello World, which has just been created. And you'll notice we've got our JavaScript and .qext file, but there's also a third file, which is worth mentioning, which is our WB folder file. And this contains a list of all of the files that are used to compile to make our extension. So as we add more, um, more documents, so our kind of properties and additional documents as our extensions get more complex, you'll need to list out those ad additional documents in this folder or in this file rather, rather. Okay, so back to our extension. So you can see the .qext on the page. So this is a JSON format file containing all the metadata uh, explaining our extension. So we can make a few edits. So you've got name, description. Let's change the description to hello world extension. And we're just going to add a an author. So I'll add the author of Mantis Shrimp. And I can save that. And the next file is our .js file. So this contains our JavaScript, so our main JavaScript file. You can see that this template has generated some JavaScript for us, but we're going to actually just delete that and just start from scratch. So the first thing we need in our extension is a define statement. Now define is required JS code. So require.js is a JavaScript file and module loader, and it's used to make our code modular. So right now we can leave this blank, um, but as we you know, build out our extension, we're going to have references to other files and, and modules that we need to compile in order to create our extension. So the purpose of require.js is to improve both the speed and the quality of our code. Okay, so that's define, and now we're going to create our first function in JavaScript. So I'm just going to write up the, the syntax for a function. So function and then um, function name, and then brackets, and here we add our parameters. So and these are comma separated. So as an example, parameter one, parameter two etc etc and then in curly braces we actually define our, our JavaScript code in, in terms of what we want to execute so you know do something in here so that is the 
the syntax for a JavaScript function, plenty of documentation online if you are very new to JavaScript. For now, I'm just going to empty this out. We won't give this a name, and also we can leave the parameters blank for now. And in this function, we actually want to return the paint method. So the paint method is an important principle when building extensions, an important concept, and it's called whenever, whenever our extension is rendered. So if you're resizing our extension or you refresh the browser or add data, the paint method is always called. So our paint method is going to contain a function and it's going to contain one parameter which is called element. Now element is the HTML wrapper of our extension. And what I mean by that is, is the, the canvas to which we are appending um, information or appending, in this case, we're going to append a HTML element and a HTML string. So we're going to do that using jQuery code. And this is the syntax. So we want to append some HTML to our element, so to our extension wrapper. And then we can type out the HTML code that we want to append. So hello world. This is my first extension in ClickSense. Cool, so I'm just going to save that. And that's it, nice and simple for our first extension. And now, now that that's saved, I'm just going to copy this and we can navigate back to the hub. So now that we're back in the hub, I'm going to create a new app and I'm just going to drag in our custom extension just to demonstrate that's been created all nice and successfully. So I'm going to call the app Hello World. And let's open. And when you open a new app, you will be prompted to navigate to the script editor because you do need to load in some code. Uh, or load in some data before we can start using the application. So I'm going to just press Control 0, 0, which is going to generate me a random script, and then Control Shift and Enter to execute that script. So now we have some data. Let's go to the app overview. Let's create a new sheet. And it's currently empty. If you go to edit to custom objects, you'll see we have one extension, a hello world extension. And there we go. So there is the HTML code that we have just inputted. So hello world, this is my first extension in ClickSense. So that's it. First lesson complete. Nice and easy to get a example extension in our Click application. So next time we'll be looking into the hypercube and uh, actually loading some data in an extension.